you are watching the Coriolis effect where the right and the left come together and create a, a moving force, a circular force, and hopefully to start a discussion and um, bring some peace and unity to our communities. We thank you guys so much for supporting us. Click the link either above or below and subscribe. Well, today's show would not be possible unless we had some sponsors, and so we're so grateful for our sponsors. Uh, and one of them happens to be faithbox.com. It is a subscription-based faith-based box uh, that you get once a month, and in that box is just a variety of goodies. Um, this is my January box. We're in February now, but this is my January box, and it has calendars and pens, and, and in these boxes are um, goodies from all, all around the world, and it, there is a impact guide, and this month is peacefulness, which I love because that's kind of goes in line with our show. Um, and it has a description of every item that is in the box, and it breaks down uh, how it was derived, where it's from, and a little bit of background behind that item. And so I love these guys. They've been very faithful to me, and so I, I just can't say enough about them. It's a faith-based box that comes to your house once a month, and you can subscribe to faithbox.com for a nominal fee. You get all kinds of good, fun uh, uh, goodies in this box. And I do believe that I have a code, Corey10, which is um, you get a discount code. So just type in Corey, C-O-R-Y, and the number 10. So thank you, faithbox.com. We love you, and we will continue to um, support you. I also want to thank beverlyhillsbomb.com, which is my partner in my business, um, for supporting our show. It is beverlyhillsbomb.com. Dot com and it's a jumbo lip balm which is fantastic this is the original it's very very smooth and yummy it has five ingredients in it that's it five it smells so good it's peppermint and you can put this on your cheeks your lips you can use it on your hands you can use it on your elbows you can put it on your split ends i've had so many people write in with a lot of different um, usages for this balm it's kind of an all-inclusive balm although we kind of use uh we use it for our lips and cheeks as well because we do have a pink. So I do have it on. I just put it on my cheeks and my lips. This actually is a great little trick if you are married and you are, um, you just washed your face and you want to go to, bread, to go to bed and look kind of fresh and fun, you can leave this on your skin all night long. Just put on your cheeks, it gives you a little color, and put on your lips, it gives you a little color. This is our um, pink shimmer. It has a little bit of mica in it, so it's kind of shiny and shimmery, but this is beverlyhillsbalm.com. Uh, we thank you also for supporting our show. Uh, we'll talk about that later. I want to get to Jay. Jay? Yes. Jay is one of, for those of you who do not know, one of my longtime friends in Hollywood. I met Jay Davis, mm -hmm. who is an actor, a comedian, he literally producer. a producer, a writer. Um, um, you have worked. Comedian or comic? Comedian. He's comedian. a comedian. Yeah, he writes I his comedian. own. I mean, I literally have. How many times have I been to your show? A I, lot. A lot. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan. I'm already going to cry because oh. when I first came here, I went, um, I have never even told you the story. Okay, let's hear it. I That's went <laughs> to, well, you're just a, Why are you crying? Because you're like a Oh my really, gosh. And you were my oldest friend. Oh, that's so nice. Well, and so I'm sweet. grateful I for you. Yeah, two She's crying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm already All right, cool. I do, I love that's Jay so because he, Jay is one of those people that like, you know, when you meet them, you don't know that you're going to go through this lifelong journey with them. Yeah. And I've gone through 30 years of journey with you almost, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I, you look exactly the same. <laughs> Actually, you look a little bit like Jesus now. Which oh, I kinda, yeah. I'm like, Blonde Jesus. Yeah. yeah I'll take um, it. But you, I've, I remember going to, I think it was either, was it Roy London's class or... Jeremiah Comey? Jeremiah, was it Jeremiah Comey. Is that where I met you originally? Yeah, no, we met the somewhere else. Class? Or I took you to the class. You took me to the class. Yeah, I like that. Class. And I remember sitting in that class and you had gotten up, gone up and you did an improv that literally had me blown away. I had never seen your, your talent. Oh. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, this guy is so talented. Wow, thank and you. so I have, you know, over the last 30 years followed your career and you have are one of Hollywood's finest comedians. You are wow. hilarious, you are kind, and you are loving. And I can't thank, thank you. you enough for your friendship, more importantly. Uh, oh. 
And so today... I'm I, honored to be your friend. I love you. You're, you're great. Thank I you for having you me too. on your show. I'm, I'm not doing anybody's <laughs> podcast, by the way. Well, but no, when you called, I'm like, I don't even care what it's about. If it's Corey's, I'll be there. I'm, I'm just, you know, Thank I'm you. coming to hang out with you. You didn't ask fun. me. You literally said yes. And that <laughs> is like, honestly, there's this saying, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Yeah. But you are... You are a, beyond a friend for me and I can't thank you enough. Oh, I appreciate it. Well, I'm, I'm thankful that you're my friend. I'm glad. Okay, so yeah, that's cool. We're going out after this. Great. <laughs> anyway, Jay is... I love Corey of... too, obviously. Thank you're you. just so sweet and kind and, okay. and uh, I'm thankful you're my friend. Yeah. Thank you, but you are a funny friend. Funny. And you can be sometimes. I have been to... Catch many... me on a good day. <laughs> I've seen you <laughs> on ev- uh, at all moments. Yeah. You've opened up for and starred and been in you know some of the funniest shows I've seen and yeah. I I want to ask you a lot about you know where that comedy comes from they say I don't know who they are but they say that you know comedians have a lot of pain internal pain yeah. and that's where they can kind of draw from and today I just want to get to know who Jay Davis is and I want the our viewers to get to know who Jay well, Davis is. Well I think is. everybody has pain. Everybody does. And I think what comedians do is they find the way to make fun of their pain. Yes. That's why uh Freedom of speech is so important because you should be able to make fun of anything as long as it's funny. And usually the deepest, darkest, painful things, if you can find a way to laugh during that time, it really is healing. So that's why they say laughter is healing. It's basically finding the comedy in the most painful times, in the most painful moments. Usually people can relate, you know, because, I mean, no one's going through life without pain. So it's how you deal with the pain. and. That's why I love comedy so much, because it's a way that people can escape through laughter. Yeah, it's great. It is, and when you get up there, every night's different for you. You get up there, you don't know what the crowd's going to be like, you Mm -hmm. don't know if it's going to be like a, you know, the energy has a lot to do with with the show, right? Mm -hmm. So you open for a lot of, of, um, well, you did it at the 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 comedy. I do stand-up comedy. I'm not, like, the best stand-up comedian well, out there. I have fun on, on stage, but I don't have any hour specials or anything. You know, I kind of got into comedy. I was a club promoter for many years first in the bar business. You know, I met you as a bartender. Yeah. And I'm a people person, so I'd always collect people's phone numbers. And I make a lot of friends because I'm a pretty fun guy to yeah. hang around with. And I made a lot of great friends. And so I collected phone numbers for a lot of years. And then I realized that I don't really want to be in the bar business, you know. It's like a lot of drugs and yeah. alcohol and, you know, like when I was a bartender, I became sober because I saw what it was doing to people. So oh at 22 years old, I quit alcohol. I didn't have a drink until I was 31. Wow. And uh, I think that's the year I started comedy. I started drinking again. So, you know, maybe that's what caused it. But I, I, I wouldn't drink a lot, you know, because I saw that this could be bad. I'm young and I might get in trouble. So I got into... Um, comedy when I because I didn't really want to be in the bar business anymore so I thought well I got all these friends like why don't I just put a comedy night together and so my friend was running Dublin's uh remember Dublin's it used to be across yeah the but, but um I go why don't I just learn comedy I'll just find some other comedians and like build a stage there and I actually think I went to one of your first shows at the Palm I'm an entertainer you I know, know you I came out here to be an actor and um you know here I am in in the bar business and yeah. you know it wasn't really rewarding for me anymore yeah so i thought well let me start something new and I, so i became this show producer and it just was like right up my alley i guess so i'm the guy that kind of like just puts it all together so i find all the little pieces of the puzzle i host the show i open the show and i embrace that most people don't like being the opener i embraced being the opener and made it i want to be the best opener i could be and not just an opener but show producer show promoter you know, it's just fun. For me, it's like I want to promote fun. So I got to do it all. I found the venue. I found the comics. I found the people to come laugh. And so I was kind of a little bit of everything. And then, you know, I learned comedy along the way. Some nights not so good, some better. So you catch me on a good night, I'm funny. And, but I became it's really good at bombing. Yeah. So I would be, <laughs> I would become a funny. Bombing? When I, bombing? Yeah. But if I did bad, people thought it was funny. Yeah. So, you know, really, I learned uh, kind of like Jar- Johnny Carson used to. Yeah. If he had a bad joke, sometimes that was funnier than if yeah. he had a good joke. So I just learned to be comfortable in my own skin on stage, and uh, even if I didn't do well, it was pretty pretty entertaining. Well, comedy is probably arguably one of the toughest spots in an entertainer entertainment. It, you know, with acting and producing and writing, comedy is very difficult. You're vulnerable. You're standing up on stage, and you don't know 
how it's going to go, right? No. Um, but I have been to several of your shows, many, countless, and I know you won't accept this, but you, and I've brought friends. You know my friends. Yeah. You are friends with my friends now yeah, that yeah. I've brought. And we literally have left there going, okay, Jay opened the show, but he should have headlined because yeah. you were the funniest one. And that's, and we're talking about like big names. We're going, yeah. you know, big, big, big. And like, you were hilarious. Thank you. you I are always hilarious. believe surround yourself with the best people in whatever you do. So that's why I always try to find the best. I only want to put the best around me. So I don't care, you know, like I'm putting the most famous and best comics around me and that makes me shine too. You so, are. You're so I, I feed off their energy. Well, when you were younger, I read that you, um, you were, this kind of came natural for you and you made your uncle, what's his name? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's just family. Yeah, it was family. family. We'd, we'd have family we'd functions. Make them crack up. You'd make people, you know, like my, my cousins played musical instruments. So, you know, you'd have, like, Thanksgiving and all the family gets together. We had a big family get-together every yeah. Thanksgiving, every Christmas. And then they'd have, like, a talent thing, you know. Like, my aunt was a great singer, pianist, so her kids were musicians, and they'd play. And then my dad, I used to impersonate my dad naturally. Can you do that I now? didn't know I was doing stand-up comedy. And, you know, <laughs> they just, my dad just go up there and, like, impersonate me, show you know, show him how I act when I jog, because he jogs goofy, and I would jog like him, and the family thought it was so funny. I was basically <laughs> doing stand-up comedy, naturally, not knowing that's all stand-up comedy is. Yeah. Just going up and making people laugh yeah. and just saying goofy stuff or impersonating people I worked with. and So that's what I did, and then it kind of became something I realized, you know, when I was, like, stagnant in the bar business, like, I need to make a change, and I, my acting career wasn't doing anything at that time. I couldn't even get an agent, so I thought, well, why not just build my own stage and 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 focus on making people laugh? And so I really gravitated towards that. And then the floodgates kind of just opened up for me, became the yeah. best comedy show. It's like a legendary show. It that really happened. you literally. And let me just stop and right it became there for easy a for me. So then I realized I'm doing what I'm in my purpose. I'm in my purpose. You're in your purpose. Yeah. And so. and you it literally you said the best comedy, but you won an award for for it did, did you not did i not read that that you uh, it was a short film you did for the 168th you uh, wrote it, and directed and it was literally considered uh, the best comedy yeah best comedy of that festival that about one year, festival whatever year that was yeah that right. was pretty cool that is cool yeah. so you do a lot of writing on of your own mm. do you write for others as well no i'm lucky to write for myself that's my weak link <laughs> you know i write on stage i like come up with ideas i'm adhd so like everyone's different you know i'm not like jerry seinfeld you know obviously right probably have millions of dollars but um you know people that do the pin I, I like come up with ideas and i throw ideas and then i personally like to go on stage and rant and just kind of go with it and see where i can where it takes me and if it's good it's weird it's just like it lodges in my brain mm -hmm. i don't write it down it just i just kind of wow. remember like there's ammo in my brain and then sometimes I, I forget about doing a bit for a long time, but then somebody will remind it. So it looks like improv, but it's really something I've done before. Interesting. And I make it look like I just came up with it on spur of the moment when really it's something I've done before, but it feels very right. spontaneous. Right. That's kind of how I do my And writing. so looking back... I, I wouldn't recommend doing it my way because <laughs> <laughs> it's, but it's you, harder to you, do it that way, but I go for it, you know. I well, just like to go for it. I understand that. I'm dyslexic. I'm not ADHD. Yeah. Maybe certain areas of my life are. So we all have different ways of however it sticks in our brain, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes it's not textbook. It's not normal. But it works for you. Yeah. And that's what matters. Um, who are and have been some of your um, influences over the years uh, in comedy? Well, you know, of course, Dane Cook came in and helped me a lot. He brought me on the road. I got the tour with him for Tour Tourgasm was the yeah. name of that tour. Tourgasm. You know, and someone just sent me a picture. I guess that's popular now on this HBO Max. Yeah. You know, they got uh, on demand now. It's, yes. all, it's on there. So you can yes. watch me from years ago bombing oh. on in front of people on HBO. I don't think you were bombing. Yeah, yeah. Well, they purposely... Oh, they did. Out, okay. The, the oh, well, comedy. let me tell you, folks. I've been to but your they, shows. But they edited that thing. It's a B, it's a BS. Can I say BS? Yes, you can. You guys know what those initials stand for. You can say worse than that. Okay. You can say that. So yes. basically, um, you know, I was doing good, not doing good. Okay. Right. But they edited a, a, a shot of the audience waiting for the show to start. <laughs> That's not, and it pisses me off because no, my yeah. manager at the time was the producer, and you're making me look. Like this terrible comic when yeah. I was getting laughs. Yeah, you're and hilarious. I was actually funny and everyone loved me. Yeah. Even when I bombed the kill, kill him a kindness joke. Was that to make somebody else look better? 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I think that it was just it's it's reality television. They produce it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Let me yeah. tell you, it's not real. Right. Okay. Reality television is less reality than scripted. Well, having done sixty six episodes but, of reality television, where yeah, they told me what to say, they produce it. They try to like <laughs> tell me, oh, say bad things about Bobby Kelly, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I like Bob Kelly. He hurt his knee. Shouldn't you be happy about that? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm never happy when somebody gets hurt. Yeah. Like, even though him and I have been fighting on this trip, you know, it's just we're butting heads. Our personalities are two different personalities. Yeah. And they wanted to get us to fight together. And I'm not going to fight, you know, like, yeah. you know. I mean, I'm never happy if someone gets injured. No. But I did get more camera time after that. Well, that's what matters. Once, he was in the hospital and I, it was just me and Dana. <laughs> I got a lot of extra camera time. The other guy went nuts and took off for like three weeks. Oh, my and gosh. How to long was that tour? Force him to come back. Because no one knew it was going to be an HBO. So basically, that's why you get a lot of Jay Davis on the program. Because one guy took off in the middle of it, quit. But they don't tell you that. They make me look like the bad guy. But, <laughs> well, you but are they, telling they, it then now. Then he comes back. Then he comes back. And um, I'm glad he came back. Cause and, then he, and then he fell down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the other guy gets injured playing football. And uh, How long and was this tour for? It's just me and Dane. So... Mr. And Dane lot, lot Cook. Good. You and Dane on tour gas. And those guys all got paid more than me, too. Double the money I got. Oh, wow, Jay. Yeah, but that's okay. I got all the camera time. We need to get you a good agent. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, you are I have really, an agent. I have you, an agent. Oh, you have an agent. Okay. I have a good agent. Well, I like so my agent. Tell us what you're working on now. <sighs> well, I haven't been doing comedy because I'm not a COVID comedian. So, you know, it sucks that COVID's out there. But I Tell don't, me what a COVID I don't comedian believe, is. Well, social distancing, people wearing masks. People in fear of catching a disease or a virus. Are people actually been and out there doing comedy the with masks on? The thing about me is I am a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder kind of guy. I know. I'm, I think that people being together is way more beautiful. Yeah. And I think people not being in fear about yes. catching something is a much better audience member. Uh, I, I would never want to see someone wearing a mask that cover up a beautiful laugh and a smile. Yeah, that's true. And um, I, the energy of the crowd is what makes a comp makes a comedy show yeah it's not even it makes the comedian better yeah so a comedian doesn't want to have to work extra hard because everyone's separated like the first thing i do if i go into a a bar show to create a bar show is like i'm putting the chairs right up on the stage and just putting people like the big group of people right in front of you as close together as possible because that energy is like boom that's Me. better than money right yeah so i'm not you'll you know i'm i feel like i'm maybe one of the best comedy show producers ever I, I mean i hate it but i love i love it but it's because of that it's sold out houses all the time people, every single time. shoulder to shoulder yeah people no matter what religion race or gender or whatever impressive. they come together and we laugh together very close very like close. right next to someone that let me tell you, you. Might hate if you knew their politics but you're laughing together here thank you so guess what thank you i'm thank not going to do another comedy show until I can do it the right way, because I think it's bad for the art form. So yeah. I don't think it's right for the art form. And I understand we're in a pandemic. You got to go with it. Well, I'm not going with it. Okay. Not that I believe, that, you know, Jay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wait until we can be free. And then I can and do let a, me tell a you. show the way I want to do it. So you asked what I was doing. So I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I guess I'm telling you what I'm not, not doing, doing. Yeah. but I am, I'm working on some things. I got a meeting tomorrow with a new movie Ooh, to be maybe us. an executive producer on it and help get okay. it made. Love that. Very excited about it. I don't know how Can much I'm allowed. Can you tell us about it? Or? Well, it's, well, okay, I no, mean, I, because enough. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm meeting with the head writer. I understand. I, I want to help him, but it's, it's an awesome comedy project. Exciting. Well, you regardless. know, your little black book carries some I got a, a lot real of lot weight of in this. In yeah. this, you have a lot of relationships, but you've mm -hmm. always maintained them, and that's a lot. That is, in and of itself, in this business, you don't find that people people actually lose more relationships in this business than they do gain them. And you have sustained your relationships over 30, 40 years. Well, just like when it was when I felt like it was time for me to start that comedy night. Yeah. Like I know now that it's time for me to start producing, producing. movies and TV, yeah. and um, yeah. I know that that's another one of my purposes mm -hmm. and it creates more laughter and I don't like a lot of the movies right now because yeah. I think there's a lot of propaganda and crap and mm -hmm. I don't even like it so why not get involved in stuff that I do like mm -hmm. that a lot of 
America and the world can laugh at and have yeah. fun. So this particular we project comedy. is going to be a really good one. It's That's going to be a, a fun one that you can bring the whole, probably the whole family, family to, to and get some laughs. So I really want to be involved in that. Now tell me a little bit about, because we've been in this industry for a long time. We've seen a lot of things happen um, that we thought we never would see happen. And tell me how it's changed um, from when we first came here. And we, we I say this because mm -hmm. we would go on auditions. We would get, we'd go on guest starring auditions. We'd get paid a lot of money for a three-day spot on 90210 or Pacific Blue. Or we, yeah. you know, those spots are gone. Yeah. They don't. They don't exist anymore, right? I don't even want to work for anybody else anymore. I know. I know. Because I don't like to audition for something. I'm not even sure I like it anymore. Isn't that weird? Like, yeah. I'd rather like. That's why I'm excited about getting involved with some of the relationships I've already built that I really like, mm -hmm. and then you know developing good product, and then you know instead of be having to worry about a casting director calling me. I'm going to be hiring casting yeah, directors. So right. that's what I want to do. I want to build You put my your own career stage. in your own hands. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And then you could do projects that you really are proud of mm -hmm. instead of something. I don't even know what this dumb right. show is. I don't really need the money. <laughs> so, I've got, I've got everyday faith. Yeah, I mean, so what so do I need your, okay. your money measly for this crappy and, show? And tell me about that. I don't want to be on your show. T tell me about your <laughs> everyday faith because. I know that in these times with COVID... Well, let me read this book and get back to you. Well, no. <laughs> Jay, you, yeah. Yeah. you surprise okay. me because you, you do have faith. You I have do. faith yeah, that moves I, mountains, and you've relied on that faith in, during some really difficult times. Yeah, you've seen some of my bad shows, yeah. No. Of course. No. Get I actually faith. haven't seen a bad show of yours. You keep saying oh, that, but like... No, you there's are... a lot of good... I, no, all my shows are great because it's... First of all, you do I always skit. put these great people around me, so no. I, you're always going to have a wonderful time, I tell you. Well, okay. We'll keep I'm not saying my comedy's like some days I get luck. It's like oh my god, it's really you're funny, hilarious. I, there's other days where it's like, eh, well, I don't know how much. But people here's the thing. Here's so Jay's not going to say this, but this is a, this is a true story. I brought a friend of mine to see his show, and my friend thought he was so fantastic that she hired him and uh, on, for a private party to do a show because he was so funny. And and we had seen some great, you know, com com comedy, comedian, comedians yeah, that comedians. night, com mm. comics. Yeah. And we left there and she said, I want that one. He's hilarious. <laughs> she's and great. She's a friend today. Thanks. I love her. She's, she's wonderful. And, but she didn't do that because you were my friend. She did that because of your talent. Oh, that's good. And yeah, we had fun at that party. Too. And that you was killed wonderful. it at the party too. I thought it was like a hotel. It was, it was hilarious. House. Yes. It you was. know what I mean? Like right. it was crazy. I pull up this thing. It's like this. Thing. It looks like <laughs> some kind of resort, it's, right? Like what never, is this? Yeah. You'd never think it's it was like a reality. country club. Yeah. This is a dude's house. Yeah. But you oh, did man. an amazing job. And, and so, I wanted to today find out, I know we have a lot of different stuff that we're talking about, but you know, faith is huge in my life mm. and it's, it's definitely something that I've relied on over the well, years. Well, it keeps you sane. Keeps me sane. Yeah. And in this business though, Jay, you know, <laughs> you and I are the anomaly yeah. and, and I'm not saying that there aren't people in the business that believe in faith. They do in all, in, you know, many different forms, but there, there was a day and it probably still exists where we couldn't speak much about that you know there are a lot of actors like chris pratt donnie Wahlberg, um Donnie's the list goes mine. on and on where they didn't really talk about their faith in the beginning but now that they have a platform they do talk about their faith and so in your life and in your journey um what is your where has your how has your faith um got you through some difficult times well i i don't know like maybe i don't know i just uh i love god so i try to always keep that first you know, mm. I make mistakes just like anyone we else. All do. But um, yeah, I I don't know. I just, hmm, I just I just I don't know. I just uh, I guess that's what makes me a good person, really, having that faith foundation. And, yeah. Were you raised with faith, or was it yeah, something that? Yeah, my parents, you know, had me going to church since I was ten, so really? that was good. Yeah, uh, we did youth group. That's where I did a lot of comedy in youth group. Our ah. youth group would have like uh, slumber party nights, and we do entertainment. I, that was also. A time that I would like to make people laugh then. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's been really important. It's very important. So when you were, not to bring up a, like a bad uh, situation. <laughs> bad but, situations are good. That's well, funny. I've been to fun. your show and yeah. you're, you're, you're a clean comic as far as I'm concerned. Well, well you are. And every once in a while, but, you know, you, you are a clean comic. Fairly. And, 
And there was, you know, we talked about this before, you know, with Bill Cosby, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, yeah. and how he was considered for many years the clean comic. And how hard is it when you're, when you're, I guess, you know, booking people? Because we've, I've been to shows and we're like, at the end of the yeah, show, yeah. we're like, wait. That guy does witchcraft. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> we were, I yeah. pulled Jay aside and I was like, um, and I then. I think that guy's like a warlock. Like, I, no, right? But, but no, you know, you know, look. Everybody because has their thing. When right? I do the comedy shows, I don't really, like, <laughs> I, I try to just book funny, you know, yeah. like, if you're funny, you're funny. Like, um, you know, people have different views. Sure. Right? But funny's funny, you know, yeah. so I, I don't get involved in people's personal lives, but if they're funny, I'm going to book them, even if it's a little dirty, as long as it's funny, funny. I'm good with it, you know. Yeah. And how are you feeling? I'm jumping all over the place because I'm so excited, first of all, to have you as a captive audience because I don't get much time with you. You're a very busy man and it's very difficult and I'm so thankful that you came out today. But how... I haven't been busy lately, so call me anytime. Yeah, I think the last time I'm, we I'm, met... I'm free with... doing not much of anything right now. So. What? <laughs> I went to Hawaii. That was Did you cool. really? Yeah. During COVID? Right as it started. I got out of here. Oh, tell us. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, Did they so make you I quarantine? I planned it. No, it was before you had to be quarantined. In fact... Everything was open when I got there. L.A. was shutting down. Hawaii was wide open. So all my friends were like, you look like a genius. I go, I am a genius. I bought the ticket two weeks before they started shutting us down here. I did a show at Yamashiro. My last show was at Yamashiro Sushi oh Spot. God. I did the banquet room they have there, like whatever. And then two days later, I'm on a flight to Hawaii. I got a killer room on the ocean. And the restaurants were totally open. All my friends are t- it was full shutdown here the day I left. I was worried they were going to cancel my flight. But as I was in Hawaii, you know, the news started hitting like four or five days in, they start shutting Hawaii down, Yeah. Right? Yes. So I'm like, but everyone was cool. There's no, you know, like bars were packed. It was fun, right? Yeah. In fact, I think I did St. Patty's Day was our last night open in Hawaii. And my friend owns the big nightclub there. So we did tear it up a little bit. I had some Jamesons and we had fun. We went karaoke. We did. <gasps> We did all kinds of stuff with a b- big group of people. Struck a nerve karaoke. karaoke. And, and I partied with them. We, we had so much fun. And then the next day, it was just like, you had to do takeout only, which was fine because I, I, I upgraded to a You went front room. from like the ridiculous so, to the sublime. That's so I, crazy. My buddy was like all bummed out. I'm like, dude, I'll, I got one bed, but I'll ask the hotel for a two bedroom, two beds in one suite. You should just get on a plane. The flights were like 300 round trip. And he got it the day of. No way. Like, he literally, it was like th- 3 in the morning, he yeah. called me. I'm like, dude, get a flight out at 6 a.m. and come to Hawaii. And he goes, he's like one of my good friends. And uh, he goes, really? I go, yeah, dude. You don't have to pay for a hotel or nothing. Just get here. And so he he jumped on an airplane. That, like, three hours later, he was on an airplane. Wow. He bought his ticket for, like, 300 day of because no one was buying tickets. Right. You know, usually it's, like, 2,000 if you try to buy it the day yeah, of. Yeah, of course. He got for 300 Day up. He was on the plane three hours later. <laughs> I picked him up at the airport and we hung out. We'd go do takeout at all these restaurants and we'd bring it back to my balcony overlooking the palm trees in the ocean. We'd go swimming in the ocean every day. They did shut the pool and tiki bar down. But then I just went and got rum and, and made my own Mai Tais with pineapple. And we had sushi and... How long were you there? Two weeks, you said? Ten days. Ten days. Dur- during the beginning of this. It got weird. Oh, you know what's funny? Too? <laughs> I planned this trip. Right? Got weird. The day I was scheduled to check out, they shut all the hotels down. Like, if you had came in the day before, even if you had a ten day stay there, they were kicking you out. Oh my gosh! You're so kidding. I literally timed it perfectly. You are to like, COVID. like what's his name? Oh! And then the flight home. <laughs> It was just me. I saw that picture. Yeah. Can we, wait, 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 like, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Can we, can we have permission can, to yeah, use I'll that picture yeah. on the show? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's so, hilarious. Okay, so there was, let's see, there was two pilots, yeah. two stewardess, and Jay. my buddy, and two other people on a huge flight back from Hawaii. <laughs> there was no one on this plane. Oh and I remember this, this model girlfriend of mine that I know, I was like, you should come out to Hawaii. I would rather she came instead of uh, my guy friend, but... He did come. Next time. But she's like, that's like scary. I wouldn't fly at this time of COVID. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is the best time to fly. There's no one on the plane. So we had a whole plane to ourselves. It was unreal. I have that photo, I think. Yeah, it's You were like, oh. Oh, yeah, it was pretty cool. So now the question is, you're back, and you've been shut in for 10 months, right? Yeah. Uh, But you know what? I'm excited to get back on stage as soon as I can do it 
the way yeah. I want to do it. Well, the question I have is, how many days a week do you put on pants? How many days a week do you stay in your pajamas? Oh, uh, there's, I go three days without showering. Sometimes yeah. I forget. <laughs> I'm like, oh wait, I kind of smell. Uh, yeah, did I, I think shower I need a shower. I don't really have to go anywhere and do anything. So. Is that why you grew the? Because I like this. Oh, you know, I started growing this in Hawaii when I was there. I was like, you know what? It's quarantine. Why not? Oh wait, last summer I saw you like three months I ago. We went to Kings, or no, six months ago we went to Kings. So just for I grew this during the. This is my you COVID look. Yeah. But um, you know now, but because I'm up for a couple of Western movies, so because you need the beard, you know, and the long hair. Do you know where I? Wait, I think you should. My buddy might direct a Western movie, which is a good one. Okay. So he said he would hire me. I think you should have your agent contact. I'm watching this show on Netflix, which I'm obsessed with. I'm sorry, but I am. It's very, very... I might as well just say Netflix. No, you can say oh, Netflix. Okay, you would no, like I'm, this. I'm going like, like that because you've said it on every show, but say it. Go I ahead. Have. It's your favorite show. I know. Well, what show is it? Here's the thing. It's The Outlander. Is that the one with... Um, Sam Hugan? Outlander. I don't know the show. See, I don't watch Netflix. Oh. I well, first of all, it's a little bit racy. Oh, yeah. But it's but but it's you have show. the look. It takes place in 1700s oh, or yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's what I want to do. I've always wanted to do a Western, yes. so I think it would be fun. Yeah. And well, then there was is, another Western. Ireland, Scotland, or? Scottish. You'd Scotland. have to have a Scottish accent. I audition for another film. one, too. How yeah. your legs look? That's fine. Terrible. Go to Hawaii, get a tan. I, no, I need more than a tan. I need to do some squats. <laughs> oh, my God. My legs are skinny. Speaking of gyms, um, you have a gym, uh, a gym... <laughs> skit in your in your oh, repertoire yeah. I forgot my act that is I've, literally one of the funniest uh, yeah. I'll probably funniest. never do it again honestly I'm excited that I forgot my act <laughs> Why would because you I'm so it? sick of it anyway it's so everyone's seen it Wait, it's over stuff. it's a wrap that uh, that's another the good thing about the COVID like like I made a joke but it's like hey all my friends and fans out there I forgot my act so that's a good thing because I'm gonna have all new stuff and I'm excited. Well, this was about it. Planet Hollywood. Planet Fitness. Yeah. Planet Fitness. Yeah, that was a funny joke, though. But I'm. Ugh. It's you, like I did it so it? many times. I don't even remember it, honestly. I, my I friends are like, I remember the all you know, your bits. I'm like, I, I don't do. want to do I anything do. that I used to do before. I want to okay, start we fresh. About that. No, that's okay. You can it, talk it, about it. It, it was it a funny, funny. bit. Yeah. It is funny. Um, yeah. I'm sweating. I don't know why. It's kind of hot in here, yeah. Bob. You're making me nervous. There's a lot of lights. It's a small room. No. You turn uh, the air on, you'd hear it, so you got to keep it quiet. So tell me a little bit about, um, I, I, I've, I've read all of your yeah, stuff. and I've been. Yeah. What was that, the cat? No, so you want to know what that is? Oh, the dog sounds like a cat. First of all, Jay, that's that's his dog's stomach growling, and I've well, been saying a, for two hours that that's the, the, the dog is, hu is hungry. Yeah, it sounds like a cat. Eat when the show it's, was over. That's hilarious. You're telling me that was his stomach? It was yeah. his stomach. It is. And I think that maybe the people listening or, might have heard that. Or it's the other end. Oh, oh and he's no, sitting by Jay. Oh my this gosh. This dog loves me. Is it all the, yeah. Isn't he cute? Do you have any yeah, animals, Jay? No. How about um, a girlfriend, Jay? Let's talk about no that. No girlfriends. No. Just Tell just us me. about your one girlfriend, really? though, that you had. That um, there's plenty of like. No, I mean these girls are. But you know, I, that's another thing. You know, that's a whole other thing. But do you want to get married and have kids? Uh, at this point, no. I've been married. You know, I got divorced in two years. That didn't last very long. Oh, my God. I met yeah. you. <laughs> you didn't even know. <laughs> I actually I do. I think, honestly, she broke up with me two-year anniversary, yeah. What? Yeah. What'd you get her? Well, I didn't get her anything. She she Maybe didn't like why. me drinking coffee. As you can see, it does things to me. Like, I just had a big coffee before I came here. But, um, and I'm ADHD. So, she, I think, I used to go get coffee I don't believe I met day. your wife. I don't, when were you married? In 2008 to 2010. I did not know this. This yeah. is a fun fact for everyone. Friends for thirty years. Yeah. No. I mean, well, I mean you, you're off and on. You know, you don't yeah. see each other well, for a yeah, long I mean, period of time. But if yeah. Jake called me at four in the morning and said I yeah. need you, I'd yeah, be there. But it's not like bring a shovel and lie. And yeah. Lie yeah. And... No. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I was I was not a great husband. husband. I, mean, I realize now, like all the mistakes I made. So I kind of get. You it. know what? Let's I talk think about she's that happier. for a second. I'm happier. So. Are you still friends? No, no. We need to just go our separate ways. You know. Yeah. I well, wish her well. Yeah. And I'm sure she wishes me well. Was Why that not? hard for but you? But it's funny because she didn't want me drinking coffee. Like, I quit coffee for this chick. That's one of the things that probably why she left me. You don't quit coffee for anybody. No. Okay? No. So, you know, it uh, wasn't very manly. You know, you know, well, were, there, were there specifics? So, what's crazy is the day she we'd well, already... First of all, a real man. She already wanted to... life and then goes drinks it in the car. She wanted to separate and break up. <laughs> and on two-year anniversary, she gives me a oh, card God. for her anniversary <clears throat> as she's leaving me and put a coffee bean card in there. <laughs> 
Stop. I swear. Stop it. I am not lying. Wait a minute. Back up. She didn't want me to drink coffee, but the, I guess, you How know. long did you give it up for? But you know what? I like coffee better than her. Okay, but I how long know. did you give the cup of coffee up? Was there? I an, think it was a couple months. Was there an actual incident where she said, what, you, something happened and you said, hang on a second. I, it was the coffee that did it. And she was like, well, don't drink coffee anymore. Like, what happened? I think she was trying to find any way to fix me. <laughs> Maybe coffee was one of the problems. I see. I'm out of control. You know, I'm not, I was not a, you know, I'm not going to say I was like this great husband. I, if I got married again, I don't, you know, hopefully I'd be a better husband. Oh, yeah. I but I never cheated. I would never cheat. No, no. You know, so that's good. I never, not that it was easy for me to cheat. It wasn't like women are standing in line like, hey, I really want some Jay Davis. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe if I had a Brad Pitt body, I would have cheated. <laughs> I think you've done. I think you've done. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like, you know, like guys think Brad like Pitt I never body. cheated. Well, nobody <laughs> wants to cheat with you. Corey, if you have a Brad Pitt you know what body, I'm saying? it's hard. But, like, if you look like Brad Pitt, it's kind of hard to... I'm sorry, You know, all these women coming at you, you're like, I'm Brad Pitt. I think you, know? you look a little bit like Brad Pitt right now with this Legends of the Fall well, look going on. let me just get this midsection. No, I mean, Thanks. well, first of all, I you're talking to the wrong person because I don't like that, like, chiseled, uh, ripped I'm, look. I like the chubby... We've already established that. By the way, show. I'm joking. I would never cheat even if I look like Brad Pitt. I know That's you wouldn't. Joke. I know you wouldn't. I already know that about I'm a pretty you. Loyal guy. You are a loyal guy, a loyal friend, and a loyal guy, yeah. and that's unfortunate. I'm sorry you went through a divorce. It's very painful. I've gone through too. Well, you know, um, this was actually a thankful for it. You know, when people I'm ask me when I get married again, too. when people say get married again, I'm like, been there, done that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm kind of happy being alone. You know, I'm, I mean, I still I'm believe in the institution of marriage. I would have wanted to have a kid, but now I'm pretty old. Like, I don't know if it's, I'm supposed to be retired. I mean, you know, I think I'm a year really? older than Brett Favre. This guy's won how many Super Bowls? MVP? He's a grandfather. <laughs> he's retired. You he's understand? Really I mean, you're older than that guy. You don't look at all. Look what he's accomplished. I'm still trying yeah, to make you, it. You can't do that because you see the guys on yeah. TV playing a piano yeah. with their feet. <laughs> and you're like, ah, I can't even play it with my hands. And this yeah. guy's like, you know, playing a guitar with his feet or something. So No, but it is crazy. Like, like, I, don't, I, mean, I mean, you know, but then again, my old uh, uh, mentor and boss, Jamie Masada, the owner of the Laugh Factory, he just recently had children, and he says it's the best thing he's ever done, even at his age. See, men so. can have... I have this conversation with my friends so maybe. all the time. Men can have them until they... Die. Die, and women have this, like, window. And thankfully, I was blessed with having one child on my own, And but I would never want to tell someone, you know, not to... That's So you never know. You just yeah, never well, know. Maybe, it, look, hey, if it's in God's plan, great. If not, I'm, I'm very happy being single. Like, I know. I really love it. I'm <laughs> so happy. <laughs> I've never been happier. Like, I, I love sitting on my couch by myself. Watching what I want, eating what yeah, I want. Yeah, I watch the murder There's mysteries. There's something to be said for you know, that, isn't there? I watch murder mysteries. Makes me happy because things could be worse. You could have been murdered. This is so true. I feel pretty good about my life here, watching <laughs> this TV. This true. And um, there's not really a lot of propaganda in the murder mysteries because it's, it's what it is. It's a, some murder happened, and this is the explanation of what the heck went wrong. This is true. It's usually a family member, a cousin, or somebody close to you, ex-wife, ex boy It's like, it's unbelievable. It's always some... So I'm thinking if someone's going to murder me, which one of my friends or family is going to do it? Oh, my gosh. You know, it's not like... It's very rare to get a serial killer to get you. It's, it's rare. Did you come to an answer as to what you would It's like getting struck by lightning, you know? It's like, and if a serial killer gets me, I'm like, dude, you win. I mean, like, wow. Jay. This guy, Jay. Jay. this guy Jay. just happened to pick me. Yeah, I mean that's. I'm kind of honored. Yeah. Jay, did you come yeah. to an answer as which family member would kill you? No, I don't. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I, I I really think about maybe my cousin. He got mad at me once. <laughs> He's a pretty tough guy. Oh I could God. see him murdering me. He, oh, he gets yeah. mad easy, man. Well, okay. can we talk about something that we have in common? <laughs> Instead of murder. Oh my God. Yeah. So Jay and I share the same. Um, we both sleepwalk and talk. Oh, do you too? I heavily. Oh, wow. I actually, listen, I sleep dream in real time. So That's I have, funny you brought that up because I was just talking about this two days ago. I'm going to bring, I'm going to yeah. say something I hope this okay that I can talk to you about. Yeah. But I, 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 my whole life since I was a little girl, I would, I mean, I, I speak in other languages. I, I like have tongues a, or? Well, that too. But like my dad said, I would just like raise my hand and start speaking in like Chinese or I would just start speaking and I, I dream in real time, like I'm actually having a dream, but I'm actually in my room or I'm, I'm downstairs. And I've had moments where I've had a dream where I've walked downstairs and mm -hmm. I had a bat in my hand. And then the next morning I wake up and the bat's downstairs. But, you know, I had that dream. And I remember one time you talking about how you were having a dream and it was so real because you had had a real bad sore on your arm. Cut. A cut. Yeah. 
And I oh, asked sure, you about yeah. it, and you said, well, I was dreaming, and I punched my <laughs> fist through a window in yeah. the dream, and you actually did it in real life. I did it in real life. Yeah. Tell me about that. Oh, that was, this is a crazy story. Okay, and it's funny, because one of the murder mysteries I was watching the other day, this guy actually stabbed his wife 44 times and then drowned her after and claims he was sleepwalking. <sighs> but then he hid the clothes, he took a shower, and had happened to have a all honey in knife. his sleep. But well, he did all that very, in his sleep. I go, look, I'm a sleepwalker, dreamer. okay? I've been, I've, I've been known to... I had a sword in my room. I'm running around with my sword once. But my like, sister was in the room and screaming, like, wake up, wake up. And I woke up within, like, a minute. Oh, my gosh. But I, I realized, oh, my God. I just had if a you sword. know you sleepwalk. But this guy saying he slept, walk, killed his wife is a lie. That guy, he's guilty. Yeah. If you know you're sleepwalking, you don't hide the sword when you go to bed? Well, we got rid of the sword altogether after that. I never dreamed that would happen. You know, that was pretty dangerous. Oh, no knives. Got rid of the cat sleep. nine tails, got rid of the shotgun, got yeah. rid of everything else. But, but so this one particular incident. This is the best one. Well, so I'm having this dream, and I got a roommate named Zahn, who's an actor. He I remember was, Zahn. He was like, a, he's an American Indian mm -hmm. actor. He did the, the um, and he, he plays gangsters, too, because he plays Mexican gangsters, because yeah. he looks tough, you yeah. know. And then he also... Um, Played American Indian. He did the Steven Spielberg uh, miniseries. He was on. You'd come around Sunset, and there is one Indian on that as you turn Sunset on the billboard. It was, yeah. it was my old roommate. It was pretty cool. Yeah. So basically, he saved my life because I was having this major nightmare sleepwalking. It's called parasomnia. Some people either sleepwalk or they have night terrors. I have both at the same time. So I'm sleepwalking with a night terror. Oh my it's gosh. psychotic. Like doctors looked at me like I was an alien. Wow. Yeah. Have you had this since you were little? I had it since I was little, but I haven't really, since I almost killed myself, it's kind of went away. It's weird. I guess wow. if you want to cure, it's a real thing. if you have parasomnia, Scare punch yourself. through a window and almost die, you might quit doing these crazy things I remember things this, so go ahead. That's so really I good. punched through the window, and then it cut my vein here, and it just squirted, and we had this big white lampshade. It looked, it was like blood everywhere, blood everywhere. It was just bleeding everywhere, and then I, did, I passed out from the blood, so... If he wasn't there, I could have bled out, you know. But let me. He let grabbed me, just, me. He put a towel around it. He picked. Go ahead. What do you mean? I, I'm asking this just because were you punching someone in the dream? And then no, that's I don't. Why you I was trying it? to get away from something. Okay, okay. And it just happened to be happening in the room. I gotcha. My dream was alive in the room. In the room, yeah. And I'm punching through the window. I was going to jump out of a second, third story window to get away. And he tackled me, and I'm bleeding. There's glass in me. Wow. Blood here, blood everywhere, squirting through this vein, squirting yeah. out like a squirt. Gun. Like, I could have hit that sign with the blood. Yeah. It was gross. And then he put a towel around it, and then I passed out, and then he carried me. So it looks like a, a murder happened. He carried me down the hallway, and I screamed, too, like like someone's been murdered. So think about living in an apartment building. You hear a crazy scream, a loud glass. Guys, yeah. I mean, like, I'm like, like a... Yeah. Right? So people call the cops. And he's just, he, did, he had a motorcycle at the time. So he's like, can I take your car to the hospital? Take you to the hospital. So he takes my car. I, he puts me in the seat. I, I've got the, and he takes me to the hospital. Right? And I had no gas in my car. On the way back, he ran out of gas. So he had to go. And it's like 5 in the morning, right? He oh had to get God. up early for an audition. And then he had to go get a gas can. He had to put gas in the car. And then when he came back, the helicopters and all the police were there. They really, the homicide was there. They, they, someone said they saw a guy carrying a body. And they, they, oh they, God, they explained Jay. what my roommate looked like. And so he gets, pulls up in my car. And the Without cops you. got guns. And they go, get out of the car, get out of the car. Put your hands in the air. And, and so the guy saves my life. And then they throw a knee into his neck. And they throw him down. And they, they put the handcuffs <laughs> on him. This is all because you punched your arm through because of my night terror. Sleeping. This guy goes through hell to save my life, and he's like, "I swear, my roommate had a nightmare, and I had to take the hospital, and I ran out of gas. Oh my god! And now I'm being arrested. <laughs> and uh, but That's like, not just an arrest. Like they fully, they put the. They put the heat on him, you know? I mean, Can we get yeah. this guy on the show as a guest and have him tell the story? I yeah. mean, oh, that would be good, yeah. So basically, that happened to the poor guy. Jay. And then he's like, I swear, my room had a nightmare. He punched through the window, and I took him to the hospital. And, you know, there's, like, all the people are around. And then, boom, the cops had to come down to the emergency room to talk to me. And he goes, listen, can I ask you what happened? I go, I had a nightmare, and I'm pretty embarrassed. <laughs> and the cops started laughing. He's like... Uh, yep, it's uh, true. The kid had a nightmare. And, and they, like, they had helicopter. Like the whole thing, it, it was a nightmare. Yeah. And then they, they finally uncuffed my friend. He was cuffed the whole time. 
Because he plays gang met, members. They thought he was like some gang member. I never met that funny. man before in my life. Man. It's not <laughs> funny, but it, it, I, I actually, I only knew. I've never told that story. And no, so because... it's good that you, you got that one. That's a good, that's a true story. <laughs> you know, my old roommate was Johnny Knoxville too, so. Knoxville was on Howard Stern one day, and he was telling about having a roommate that, that had night terrors, and Howard Stern thought that was so cool, and they, they brought my name up, so that was pretty neat once. No, you are so funny. They talked about my night terrors. Oh, my god. But goodness. I haven't really had them lately. Maybe that's another reason why my wife left, you know? She was sick of me having night terrors. <laughs> Who knows? Well, I no, talk a lot in my sleep, and it's, it's, it's a real thing. I think a lot of people can identify with what you've gone through, you know? Yeah. People do do those things. Now, I don't know to that degree of, like, saying, oh, yeah, I murdered my wife. That's terrible. But Yeah, now, that guy was, I didn't believe it. Yeah. But he did get convicted, so rightfully so. Now, in the industry, totally jumping, uh, changing subjects, have you ever managed anyone and you're in this industry? Have you well, been I mean, on the other? not really, but kind of like, well, Keanu Reeves had a, a band and I was hanging around those guys back then. And, um, Dogstar. Dogstar. Dogstar, yeah. right. And then I, uh, I kind of like helped them get gigs and stuff like at that time. Right. And so they kind of, I just kind of said I'm the manager and like, okay, you're the manager. And then boom, you know. I took them to like the Milwaukee Death Metal Festival, and their band <laughs> did covers of the Grateful Dead. That didn't go well. So I was fired at the festival, but we were still having fun. Oh but yeah, I took them to really. The, yeah, and I lied to them. I said it was the Milwaukee Music Festival because they're paying so much money, and I got you know I got my percentage. It was fun, and it was fun. Why'd they fire you? Well, they got they just. That was not the right. You don't. You know what death metal is. Ever. I do. They were not. They're in the, the did thirty-five they, death metal bands in Dog Star. <laughs> did they play? And they headlined between the Mentors, which is a really evil band, and Deicide, which that band is really evil. Like the guy's got a branded cross upside down his oh forehead. God. And they sing about really awful. Oh. Yeah, they're basically satanic. Yeah, satanic oh band. And so they're sandwiched between two satanic bands that I and I'm not even. You know, I'm not a satanist. I just thought thirty grand. Yeah, we'll be there. I'll get him to go. I got him to go, but I just said it was the Milwaukee Music Festival. We got there. It wasn't even. But the guy lied to me. He told me it was the Milwaukee Metal Festival. I'm not oh, metal. Well, but when I got there, it was yeah. the Death Metal Festival. You can't leave that word out. No. Yeah, I wouldn't have lied to them about it. You Small know. detail. Yeah, you can't. When you put death in front of a word, it changes things drastically. You know, you got a certificate. What kind of certificate? I got a death certificate. You, know? <laughs> you got a wish. What's your wish? It's a death wish. You know. What kind of metal do you like? I like death metal. It's not. It was not the best uh, no. situation. No. But we still had fun, you know. But he, they did. They got cups. She got fired. They got cups thrown at him during the show. Really? Did they do the whole show? They had to do 30 minutes to get paid. So, yeah, they, they did, did 30 minutes of... And That's within brutal. the first 30 seconds, uh, the crowd was chanting F you, and they were throwing beer cups at him. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you've ever seen a stadium with, like, 15,000 people. Uh -huh. And 10,000 are throwing cups. It looks like <laughs> snow in the arena. 10,000? Yeah. And they were just, they had to keep playing. Cups are oh flying at the stage. The chicken wire. And Keanu the was just like, oh, I think they hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, I'm rich. You know, and they just kept playing. He was still smiling the whole time. He thought it was funny. Oh my God. To this day, he's like, I would have never gone to Milwaukee, and I'll never go to Milwaukee again. So, thank you. It was a great trip. Yeah. <laughs> He's so kind. He's, He's a just very so kind. good guy. Yeah, yeah. we had fun. We oh still had fun. Gosh. The yeah. other guys hated me for it, but I'm still friends with those guys too. You we have knew. Some I stories mean, to tell. I basically realized, like, we laughed, like, "Yeah, you're basically fired." I'm like, "I get it." And then we just still had fun, and that was over. That my music career was over at that time. But you know, if I'd stayed, I remember there was other young bands there. I was only like 21 years old, 22. So the other bands wanted me to manage them. They go, "We want a young manager like you." I go, "I don't think you understand. Like, I'm more of a goat tail guy. I'm just getting free chicks and booze. <laughs> like, oh this is not God. for real. Like, I'm not a legit. They think I'm the manager. Well, I guess part. I'm acting as the manager, but I'm not a real manager. He goes, "No, that's what a manager is." I'm how like, did you? How did they I didn't even realize that you? a manager is just a guy who's. FOS, you know, and yeah. you just But you how just did make they contact you? They contact you because they knew God does. Yeah, the that's right. Can because we make a business card that say, I had a his coattail? Uh, no, no, on? I did have business yeah. cards. It said Dog Star, and this agent, his acting agent, didn't want to deal with it. So people will call the acting. He's like, I don't know, call this guy. Gotcha. And now I had a home phone in like my little single apartment, and my phone was ringing off the hook. We want to book the Keanu Reeves band. I'm like, well, they're called Dog Star. And then uh, this guy's like, so I want to book them at the Milwaukee Metal Festival. I'm like, they don't play metal. He goes, what kind of music do they play? I go, well, they suck. <laughs> kind of like a punk rock. 
He goes, I don't care. I just want Keanu Reeves to come to Milwaukee. I'm like, okay, let's do it. How oh much? My God. 30 grand, bro. 30 minutes, 30 grand. A yeah, thousand made, a minute. I made like, let's see, I made about $4,500. $4,500. That's not a bad gig. It would cost you your job. Yeah. And a few and a few. 21 years comes. old. Back then, that was good money. Wow, Jay. Yeah. I got fired, but it was fun. We had fun. You have a lot of stories. Yeah. Tell um, our listeners and viewers, because we're both audio and visual on this show, um, a little bit about the auditioning process for you and how, hmm. you know, there's a lot of people out there that want to be actors. Right. They well, just I, do. And they don't understand how brutal it is. And I've had my own fair share of acting traumatic auditions mm -hmm. you know i mean it's much like la la land sometimes have you seen that movie la la land i did a terrible audition once tell us about it it was an open call remember those i, I do young. i remember well they did an open call audition at universal studios for a movie and there would be like a thousand people showing up and they make you wait in the long yes. lines they don't give you water it was like 110 degrees in the valley and it was april fool's day so i thought it's a good chance to show them i can really act i'll do an april fool's joke Right? When I get in there, they take about 20 people to time in. They do like a group, tell them what they want from the audition, then one at a time would go in. And so my buddy was with me. I go, watch this. I'm going to pull an April Fool's joke. So we're, we're all sitting in a circle at Universal, right? And, uh, and I'm sitting there, and I know this is terrible, but I, I did a fake epileptic seizure. What, what they, <laughs> so they're telling us what to do for casting, and then I just start kind of shaking in my chair and then I flip Jay. off the chair and I start flipping around like Jay. Craggling like that and it went way too well like I I thought people would know I thought I'd be like hey April Fools right but it was going so real like everyone's like oh my god oh my god and everyone's flipping out and they go flying to the room and guys call 911 call 911 and I'm just like oh, what do I do now this is going too well and they're, I'm like they shouldn't call 911 but I'm like I just kept doing it and then I'm really? like, now they're calling 911. Well, you gotta commit. Yeah. You gotta commit. I to stayed it. committed. Jay. And then like people are, you, you okay? And then I was just like, April Fools. <laughs> and then they got so mad. I got like in so much trouble. I he bet. stopped and like, everyone's. The and then one of the actors like, you're an a hole, man. That was totally not cool, bro. Ugh. And then like, and then like, I was like, Ugh, that didn't go as well. And my friend acted like he didn't know me. And people wanted to laugh at it. Well, and then, and then, and then, and they went there. You know, I'm not gonna audition you for this you were guy. Done. You okay, were done. I get it. All right, sorry, I did. I thought it'd be a good idea to try to act. You know, and you so then, that? and then, what's funny is about ten years later, I'm going into this bar. I remember opening it then, yeah. and some guy goes, "Hey, man." Wait a second! You're Did the you do like an audition yeah. like uh -uh. ten years ago? You know where you serious? faked a seizure and he was in line. And, and I go, yeah, that was me. And he goes, he goes, dude, I wanted to laugh so hard. That was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And I had to. He goes, and when you left, the guy goes, man, that guy was a great actor though. <laughs> and then, and then, um, and then he's like, dude, that, I just want to tell you that was great. So. But for those that was of a terrible you, thing. I don't recommend yeah. doing it. For those of you who are wondering, that's not, if Jay that's has not being heart. professional. No. That's not, but I was also no. 20 years old. I know. Years. Yeah, well, we do stupid things when we're 20. Yeah. I would never do that. No. But that's a true story. No, but it just goes to show you that people will do just about anything for an audition. I mean, to get that role, you really do. You have all these emotions going inside of you, and you're thinking in the moment, you know. Yeah. What can I do? But have you seen the movie La La Land? I don't like singing movies. Okay, so well, in the movie... Like a, they sing the whole time? They don't sing the whole time, Jay. I love you. A lot you. of singing. But what... Not, you know, but, I'm ADD. I don't watch... A, I barely watch any movies, honestly. In the movie, it's Emma Stone. She does this audition, and she has this moment where she's just giving it everything that she has. It is a moment where every every other moment cultivates into this one moment in, in as, an act, as an actress mm -hmm. in the room with the casting director. And she's in the moment, and the casting director assistant walks in, opens the door, and, like, breaks her moment, right? Yeah. Because it's so L.A., La La yeah. Land. Have you ever had a moment like that where you're in, you're giving it your all? Not the epileptic moment, because no, that was... I got better stories than that. That was kind of... I was a kid. I shouldn't have done that, but... <laughs> You know, it's just a, it really happened. People but, don't. What I'm trying to get at is people don't really understand the process well, okay, of for an actor story. from getting the side. You you get the call from your agent. Let me set this up for you. Yeah. You get the call from your agent. They say we've got a role a part for you to read. You're just excited. You don't care what role it is. You're just excited yeah. that you have a role to read. Yeah. You get the sides. You go over the sides. You spend two or three days if you're lucky. 
going over you the side. You might even go shopping for a new outfit. You first. might even go shopping People for a new that, outfit. Go out and put new outfits on and everything. You hire a dialect coach, whatever you do, and then you go to this audition <laughs> you and you're work into you're it. sitting in a room with like seventeen other yous, and then twenty then other yous, right? Like, Next. <laughs> right. So tell us about one of your moments that's like that. This is a pretty good moment, love, but it also is relationships, you know, it really is. So yes, it basically, is. you know, my friend who was a big movie, he wrote Jumanji mm. and um, the Asteroid movie. What mm. was that one with um, Ben Affleck? And, uh, Armageddon. 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 Yeah, yeah, he wrote that. Yeah. So he used to hang out at the bar that I used to manage back in the day. And he's like, if you want to be a successful actor... Make friends with three top casting directors, but really be friends. Go for drinks with them. Go for dinner. Be friends with three top casting directors. You'll work all the time. Okay. So that's a good, that's a good thing to know. And I have one good friend that's a casting director. That's how I'm getting my auditions. He, okay. he loves me and he gets me auditions. Okay. But anyway, so but my friend, his dad was the director producer of what, what's that James Spader show that was on Boston Legal? When, oh no, was it called Boston Legal? What's the Boston he, Public or Boston Pub- Legal? No. No, the what's, the, no, what's another one? James Spader, it was great. He was fantastic. That was Boston that. Legal. I think it was Boston. Yeah. It was yeah. Boston Legal. Okay, so I get an audition for my agent for Boston Legal. And nowadays they, they ship out the emails, right? And so you print it up and you see who the director's name is and everything. And I'm like, this last name is the same last name as my friend. And I'm like, I wonder if that's his dad, right? So I call him up. I'm like, hey, dude, is this your dad that's on the Boston Legal team because yeah my dad created that show he's the director and producer one of the directors and a producer i go well i'm auditioning for you he goes, what's your part and i told him he goes oh dude you're perfect for that he goes hold on i'll call you back in five minutes so then he calls his dad and then he calls him back in five minutes and, he, and this kid's a comedian you know so he calls him back in five minutes and he goes uh hey um my told my dad about you and he's going to be expecting you and um you don't have to go to the casting the first cast so you're going to go straight to producers so don't even worry about Going to the first casting, yeah, just go straight that. to producers. I'm like, okay, great. So I get down they there. walked in and they said, you're the guy that faked an epileptic seizure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I remember you. <laughs> you're no, hired. No, thank God. That, it, that was many years had gone by. So thankfully, the business didn't remember that. And so basically, um, I go in. This guy comes in with a suit and tie. He's got like a whole entourage. Very la la. LA. And he's got, oh, thank you for being so nice to my son and comedy, helping him out. Like, thank you, because I'm glad you're here. And then the casting director's like, hi, did you want to run your lines with me first to make sure? Because I'm thinking the casting director's probably got a friend that he's trying to get the job, and I'll go work, read with him, and he'll say I'm bad and go, forget it, don't yeah. even let him do it. So I'm not going to give him a chance oh, wow, to tell me no. You were really in your head in that moment. Yeah, but I'm like, this guy kept going, you should really run it by me first, just so I know what you're working with. I'm like, no, that's cool. I was told I can go straight to producers. He goes, um, but you might want to run it by me first. Let me just see what you're doing. I go, like I said, I was told to go straight to producers, yeah. but thank you. Yeah. Because I feel like this guy might hate Lord all my parade, efforts. Right? Yes. So I'm like, no, I'm going to do what my friend told me. I'm mm-hmm. going straight to producers. I'm not reading with this cast. Yeah. Guy. You didn't get me here. So <laughs> I said no like three times. He kept saying, I'm like, this guy's trying to take my job. And meanwhile, he's so, like, wink, wink, let me help you out. Yeah, yeah, meanwhile, I think he's trying to get his friend the job, right? Oh, so I'm like, I'm not going to read for this guy because I might mess up in front of him. So yeah. I'm just going straight to producers like I was told. So I go in, and it's like this huge room of people, and he's on the couch. He's got assistants. It's, it's, there's like 15 people watching this audition. I know. It's so, so, so hard. So like, I guess network racking. people are in there and everything. I go in, and the one thing they teach you in auditioning is never, ever stop in the middle of an audition and say, can I start over? No. You just don't do that. It's a never. So I'm doing the audition. Everyone's looking at me, and I feel like I messed up, and I went, oh, man, I'm so sorry. Can I start over? No. Yeah, I did that. And and then the casting director's finally like, see, I don't need you to run (laughs) away. And then the guy goes, Jay. The main guy goes, do it again, right there. Stay there. Do it again. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and, and then I go, ah. And then I go, you know what? I feel so bad. Like, and then I start telling him, I was taught never to stop an audition. Oh, no. And go, can I you start over? You are not doing this. I start saying, you oh, know what? That's God. the worst thing you do in an audition. Now the whole room is cracking up laughing. Oh, my God. Because I'm serious. They're, my pain yeah. is funny. Yeah. I'm like, I should oh, never yeah. have done that. And I don't. You know, I was told. Never in an audition, especially a producer session, do you stop the audition and go, can I start over? And here I did that. Right in front of all the producers, all the network, and they are dying, dying. of laughter. Did you book it? And when they're laughing, he's like, Jay, I don't care. Do it again. <laughs> do it from there. 
just do it, stay right there, do it again. So I just do it, and then they're like all clapping. So to be honest with you, I don't ever believe what people say. Because I think the fact that I broke audition got me the role. Because they were it. laughing. And that's my point. You but I was also role. making fun of myself because I did the wrong thing. That's what made them laugh. Jay? And then I booked it. Yeah. I've had the I same booked it experience. on the way home. See? So you know what? There's no right or wrong. There's no right you or wrong. You just have to go with your feelings. That's right. And be honest. That's right. I was honest. Do you remember? That's a hilarious story. Mm. Do you remember how many auditions? I think Luke Perry was noted as saying he had. It did uh, help though that my friend's dad. A little bit. Was directing. <laughs> that also helped a lot. Uh, anyway, Luke Perry, who used to be on Melrose Place, no, nine hundred two one zero. He is since not with us anymore. He deceased, but yes. he was a great actor, and he he said in one of his earlier. Um, interviews that he had gone on I think it was like 288 auditions before he ever booked anything yeah and do you remember the amount of, of auditions you had gone on before you ever booked anything no no not really. yeah it's, no it's it's brutal it can yeah, be got, your got, first one or it can be your 288th one but I it's quit a doing commercial stuff after a while because it was just annoying yeah I didn't really want to be in these commercials anyway you know yeah. it's like Oh, oh, future product, and then we used to get paid more in commercials when I was younger, and then things change. It's like I'm driving to Santa Monica, and then I got to drive over here to Century City, then That's I got to get lot. back to Burbank, and then go back to Santa Monica. I'm like changing clothes in my car, stressed out, can't find change for the damn meter, it's so and true. I get in there late, and they look at me like I'm a jerk. I'm like I'm done with this. You're hopping up on one leg with reindeer antlers and a clown nose on. <laughs> hey, I want to sell you guys Perel. I don't want to do that. You'd probably book I that just, now because we're in this COVID yeah, and everything. I'm but, not doing it. But that. not to mention you had a whole Thomas guide that you had to go through to uh, try there to you get go. There. there was no way. Oh, my God. No maps. No. Okay, Nothing. hello. No. Life was better then, though. And for a dyslexic trying I to use a better. Thomas guide, I've ended up in Seal Beach on looking yeah. for an audition in Beverly Hills I before. missed auditions because of that. Yeah, yeah. no, Whatever. it was crazy. Part of the work. Well, I am so happy to have you here today, Thank and I, I look forward to this new movie that you are well, doing. Well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if I can do it. I, I, I think I, I would love to be a part of it in some way, and if I can help them, then yeah, I'll be a part of it. So I'm, I'm trying well, to Well, here's a little... Get little it I have a few questions I want to ask you. It's kind of our ending chat that we have, a running theme going on here, mm -hmm. but you and I have never actually worked together. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we'll have to maybe get you... Can you do an Australian accent? I don't know. Actually, I can. Oh, okay, there you go. You yes, got dialect. And I'd coach. love to go to Australia. Then that'd be fun. Mate, I know. No, That's I good. can. Yeah, there I, you can, go. I can go. That would be I cool. I can be an Australian actress. No. That no. could be cool. Hey, <laughs> you're yes. supposed to have my back. You're, I have you're your supposed back. to say yes, I have absolutely. You. you told me, always be honest. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, but I can do this. Yeah, I'm on I the spot right now. Just give me the dialogue, yeah. and I'll either, you know, <laughs> fake falling down or something. Um, but I do want to know. We have three questions okay. for you. We're going to have you do a Warshark test. Warshark. Warshark okay. test. Sorry. Do you know what that is? No. It's Never where you that. look at a picture and then you <laughs> see something. And I want to know what it is that you see. Okay. Just tell us whatever first comes to mind. Okay. There's no right. Well, there is a right because I don't even There's know no what right. these are. There's no right. <clears throat> but do you have, well, are you going to superimpose on the thing what they are? Well, eventually after we get 25 people, I'm going to put a list of everybody, what you saw, what Frank Stallone saw, what everybody else I saw. You. So you can... Okay, let's do it. Because I, mean, I know what I saw in this first one. My brain oh, is... This isn't, we'll I know, see. I love this. I this is so great. Is. We've never done this. Okay, so <clears throat> are these in order? Oh, I did them out of order before. Do, I'm do so them sorry. Five, five to one. That's what you did last time. Okay, so just first comes... Butterfly. Out. Wonderful. That's so sweet, Jay. Bat. <laughs> bat even butterfly. A bat that looks like a pumpkin, <laughs> right? I don't know why. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know. That, that I can't say. Gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we've got that's, that's, a that little. That's very, awesome. That's, okay. That's a, ooh, that looks evil to me. I don't know. That looks like a, looks like a flying pig. Okay. Do like you don't know what these pig. are? Or can we have some fun, beautiful things? Like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but that. Oh, that looks like a clown face. A clown face. There yeah. was one in here that was... It's not in here. You, t you no, switched them up on me. Oh, fire. this one was upside down. I thought this looked like a heart shape. Oh, Uter you uterus. Know, for that's what uterus. I thought the other one looked like. That's what I, I said. Know. Well, those are good. Those are, those, okay, those so. are set images for the Rorschach. They're ink blocks. You take ink, right. go like that, and you open it up, but they're set images. Right. Yeah. So everybody gets the same images. That's the whole idea. No, it's, and we get to see wh how, how our brain How crazy thinks. you are as opposed to how crazy everybody else is. There you go. Right. Well, hopefully that worked out. Well, can you tell us uh, three, just in three words, that would describe Jay Davis? 
words, not sentences, just like a one word. Fun, nice guy. You know what, Jay? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's one sentence, three words. Oh. One sentence, three words. What, wait, um, three but words. you're right. You're right. You are a yeah. fun, nice guy. Yeah, that's it. And you're amazing, and I'm Thank so you grateful for, for you. Me. That was fun. Well, I have one more question. Okay. Don't feel obligated. To, okay, you know. yes, I'll do it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, paint my house. Jay's going to paint you're my right. house. Oh, you're I amazing. I just started painting. I know. Yeah. Uh, who's your celebrity crush? I don't really have any celebrity crushes. Um, hello. Let me think celebrity hello. crush. Hello. Oh, uh, celebrity crush. Who would be my celebrity crush? I can't remember. I really don't. Corey! <laughs> oh, <laughs> my gosh. Go. Really? Uh, yeah. That's so amazing, Jay. I never would have guessed. I, can, I know. Me. Well, I thought I had one recently, and I'm trying to remember which... Oh. Who and make the cut. It could be when you were no, younger. No, you're in. You're in for sure. I'm just kidding, Jay. You're I my friend, and I love you. When you grew up as a kid, who was the model or celebrity that you said, hey, if I ever grow up... Oh man, I really liked Phoebe Cates from when because I was a kid. I liked the Phoebe Cates from yeah. that that that. From I was that age, age so Ridge, 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 Ridge. they really got me with that. Well, one. Of course, she was beautiful. Well, she was I think that was she first. That. Yeah, that was the first time. Was I she saw seventeen? A she did girl, that? So that's probably why I was like, oh, boobies. Oh wow. So yeah. Yeah, guess, Phoebe Cates. But I always thought she was just so beautiful. She is beautiful, and she's married a long yeah. time to Kevin Klein for a very very long time. Fish called Wanda. Yeah. Okay, that's funny first of all, John Cleese was a fish called Wanda. And Dave, that's an odd, that's an odd reference for Kevin Klein, but yeah, Dave and... Yeah. You know, a oh, fish. he's been in a lot of my favorite movies, yeah, Kevin no, he's Klein. Great he's really good. A lot of people haven't seen that movie, A Fish Called Wanda, but and I she, can identify with her because she loves the fact that he has he speaks in a different language, like the, the accents, mm-hmm. and I love that too. So. She was in Fast Times and then Drop Dead Fred, Yeah. and I don't know if she did anything after that. Fast Times, though, that was a good one. That was, that good was one. the best. Such a good yeah. movie. <clears throat> Well, you've the whole been amazing. story of that movie is good. Like, What's the, whole, the story of the movie? Tell I us. I think that's the guy that was writing for Rolling Stone magazine. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, that guy's whole story is so interesting. And yeah. then the, 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 he went and traveled with bands. I did another movie about that mm-hmm. like, based on his life. So it's a really Almost interesting Almost famous, guy. wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Almost famous. So that yeah. guy is a pretty interesting guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The whole concept of how it came to life. Malls were popular back then. It's all, yeah. Like, kids would think that movie's so... Da- they don't even know what that is. Oh, I know. They don't There's hang out. There's Galleria. That's there was no cell phones, no businesses. computers. This is what you did for fun. You'd go hang out at the Orange Julius. You know, that's right. it. Our yeah, days. we actually, Jay, we had some That was a much times. better life. I was just saying today, technology is ruining life. Yeah, it is. I miss life. I think that we got to get back to a, a time where there's a revolution against Do you remember technology. the Viper Room and it's Roxbury? Like, let's get rid of all the Facebook and all this stuff. Uh, yeah, I've done all that stuff. Sunset Social let's, Club. Let's just go hang out and talk. You, you, everybody's in their phones or yeah. they're wor- they want to take pictures of them. It's like, uh, or you're out on a date, the chick's taking. It's like, golly, can we just stop? I know. I just want to hang out. I know. No, I just want to eat my food yeah, and yeah. not let you take a picture of it. It's like, it's like, uh, it just, it's, 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 it's becoming kind of. Narcissistic. I don't like it yeah. anymore. Well, they, they have done studies and they I said that... I want to just get back to how we used to be even back in the 80s and 90s. They early s- 90s. I agree with you. And they've done studies and said that this, picking up your phone, is much like... Um, it gives you the same sensation as crack. Does. Yeah, I'm addicted to it myself. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm I, I get it. it but it, it literally it. Yeah. does the same chemical... Yeah. Uh, what would it, yeah, yeah it, it as it, as if you were to do crack. Yeah, and so it it's it's kind of toxic for. So kids. when you wake up in the morning, how long is it before you grab your phone? I grab mine and right away it's something to do. <laughs> it's terrible. You know, You're not I'll be honest. To do that. I grab mine pretty fast because mm-hmm. my daughter texts me late at night all the time and she'll say I love you, mama, or whatever. And it's like usually I'm asleep and it's the first thing I wake up to, so I'm yeah, super excited nice. to see it. Yeah. But if I didn't have to, I'd probably you know leave it there because it's so. Well, yeah, because there, there are no more clocks in bedrooms, the like clock radios. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, no, I haven't worn a watch in 15 years. Yeah. Right. So the first thing I do, hit it, just see what time it is. Yeah. And then you see all the notifications. There you go. You're right. Like, you're right. You pay attention to stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of great things. It, everything it. has so it's, its, it's, it's got its balance. Balance, so. yeah. I could go without it, though. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I want to go back to just being a non Well, let me tell you, you've gone for an hour and a half without it. Yeah, that's so good. So I can't. Oh, let me check <laughs> well, I'm grateful that you were here today. I Thanks think I get to hang me. out with you after, so thank this you. This was way more fun like than I even expected. So really? It really was. I oh, thought this was enjoyed it. So. You, you were probably right. <laughs> it, it, it turned out pretty good. No, Jay, I'm not going to, like, I know I no, could I go on and on and on. That but was fun. 
but you're really one of Hollywood's finest. Well, you are. Thank you. I you are it. talented, yeah. and you're just kind and loving, and I care about you, and I'm grateful for you. So same here. Thank please, you. Uh, on a side note, say hello to your family. Oh, I will. You yeah, know. my mom says hi. Uh, say She's hello. Good. They're all good. Good. Yeah. They've all gotten through this COVID. Yeah. Good. Mom didn't get it. Wonderful. My roommate was worried, thought I was a super spreader because I went to Hawaii. I went to a <laughs> Halloween party. Oh I never God. like wearing masks. I only wear them because they have to in the oh store. Oh, my God. And so she would spray me with Lysol. Oh, God. And then she went to... Are you serious? And she ended up catching COVID. And, but she got it over there in uh, the Carolinas. But, like, wait, hold back up. She she literally sprayed you with Lysol. Like, the Lysol. Uh, and at first I was mad. I'm like... Kind she's of. Like, but she's the best roommate ever. Like, I love her, you know? So I was like, ah, you know what? I got real mad at first because like, I felt like, I'm not the virus here. But then, <laughs> <laughs> then I realized... You know, she's fearful, but you Fear. know, she got to see it in on the Fear. crappy news, and and uh, I go, well, if that makes her happy, what do I care, right? So I'm like, spray, cool if, if that makes, you, uh, spray it too, whatever, spray it up. It's lead incentive. And you know what? That's good. Whatever, whatever makes you feel good. I don't care because she's that good of a roommate. She, now, a she's the best roommate I've ever. But had. since all of that beginning, because I think we were all in a lot of fear in the beginning. Since that, has she kind of? Calm down a little bit. Well, she caught it, so she had the disease, the virus. So and where, did you spray her? She poor thing can't smell or taste anything still. Still takes a while. Yeah, wow. my niece had it too, and she can't taste anything. Wow. She doesn't even like getting out burger anymore. So did you quarantine from your roommate? Well, luckily, no. She caught it when she was away, away. for Christmas. Okay. So she stayed longer. Gotcha. She would have mind thought I gave, gave it to her, so I'm glad she. I mean, I'm not glad anyone got it, but I'm first of all, I'm glad she survived it. She's not. Yeah, absolutely. And but, you know, it was meant to be that if she did get it, you know, I I didn't have to worry about catching it either. Or she didn't have to worry about giving it to me because we live in the same place. There are some people so that have like, the T cells. Unfortunately, it worked. It was meant to be. But now that she's had it, it's not. You know, she. I don't think you can really catch it a second time right away. So we'll right. see. But anyway, I just hope this. You know. Away. Can I ask you a very controversial question? You sure. You can say yes or no, or I'm not going to answer that. I don't mind. Are you going to get the vaccine? No. Okay. Not getting the vaccine. And we'll just end there, folks. <laughs> well, you, you, you know my question with the vaccine, right? No. How do you recharge the chip they put in you? I don't even know. Like every couple months, you got yeah. a plug or something? Yeah, I'm not getting any vaccine. I'm not getting a vaccine. My mother got it. My mm -hmm. mom got it. And if she was, I, I was against it. I'm like, I don't know if she should, but she's... Well, she's 79, wow. and she wanted to get it, and that's so... Did she get both, or just one? Well, there's a the two-shot deal. Yes. So she's got one, one, and she's getting another shot. Okay. She seems fine. Okay, good. She's happy she got it, and okay. I'm happy for her. Okay, good, great. So I think if... if Everybody has their it, own opinion. It. Yes, absolutely. And I think if you don't want to get it, you know, that's, that's fine, too, but... Uh, I think my mom was happy to get it. It gives her a peace of mind. She's, sure. And she's older. Of course. She could really die from it, so... Yeah. You know, and as long as she's happy, that's that's, that's all I'm that matters. Saying. Yes. What do you do if they make the rule that you can't fly domestically unless you prove that you had the shot? Uh, that's gonna suck. That's I don't gonna know. Suck big time. Yeah. I don't know yet. I don't know, but I'm not getting a shot for that. I I just go with no taste and no smell. I I don't think I would die from it. I, uh, here's how I feel. I, did, I, I think that it should die. be your own personal choice, just like the flu shot is. I yeah. think that it should. I don't want to even get the flu shots. Honestly, I never get the flu shot, and I don't ever get the flu. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. That's just me. I know. I hear but, you. But, you know, I have a good immune system. Yeah, it's all about so, your immune system. You have to keep it up. But, you know, if COVID kills me, you guys can make fun of me. At, at my, I, at wouldn't, my, I would never. I wouldn't even care. Eulogy. I would, like, please do. Yeah. Here's a guy who didn't want to get the vaccine. Now look at him. Huh? Well, look at your phone. <laughs> what do you think now, Jay? <laughs> yeah. Could have had the vaccine. 20 more years, bro. But no. I'll probably, <laughs> honestly, I'd probably say, are you auditioning? Are you, are <laughs> yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, am I being punked? Yeah. Am I being punked? Well, Jay Davis, I can't thank you enough for coming down thank today you for me. on the Coriolis effect. Wait, before he leaves, get his little black book with all the other comics in there and all the other people's. I know he, yeah. you know, he's worked with some of Hollywood's finest. He's not. He doesn't give that up easily. Good. Yeah, it's tough. Hold he would be. A, a he type. would be a great um, voiceover though for for your press. Yeah, yeah, he was talking about that. Yeah, I've done voiceover he, he, work. Yeah. I done that. I did a lot of voiceover he'd be, stuff. He'd be great in an anime. I did the character. Del, I was the Del Taco voice for three commercials. Oh really? gosh. Yeah, get down to Del Taco for the Joe Combo Super Summer Sweepstakes. Only at Del Taco. Oh my gosh, you were. Yeah, that was me. I remember that voice. Get down you think he was lying to you? Of course he was. Del Taco. No, I'm just like it's you know you hear it. And I did that audition. I didn't even think about it. I just I got lucky. Wow. I booked the first three voiceover jobs I ever did. And then the paycheck started coming, and it's a lot of money. Yeah. I never booked again because I wanted it. 
I didn't realize so much money could be made from that. Oh, it's not a problem. And then all of a sudden I'm nervous. I didn't do it good as an audition. Isn't that weird? But if you're not worried about the money part, you could kill it. You kill it. Yeah. Just, it's a weird it's psychological like, thing. You gotta happens. trick your mind. You like, do. You're not gonna make hundreds of thousands of dollars on this commercial. I did yeah. a Honda commercial. Yeah. That was a lot of money. I just said one line about a Honda car. Yeah. And I think I made quite a bit of money. I'm talking a lot. Jay, I was in the Pepsi commercial. All I did was drink the can of Pepsi. It was yeah. the it was the um, Woodstock Pepsi right. with Joe Pitka. Remember Joe Pitka? Ooh. Yeah. He was the director. And I think I made like seventy five thousand dollars on yeah. that on that just one shot. They don't have those men. Not like that anymore. Not but like when that we were younger, anymore. they really a lot of paid them. a lot better. But then things changed. Things well, changed. Well, could be ease. We don't pay much. Now they do a lot of non union. You know, non union. Oh, I People know. People just went straight non union. I. It's almost like that's us. We're non union. Yeah, I've, I almost feel like I don't know. That's a whole other. But you know what? You're going to be producing. And Other so stuff too. I look I, forward I've got ideas to... I'm working on too. And you know, to be honest with you, I'm thinking about doing my own comedy. You should. Because I've been should. promoting for everyone else for you all these should. years. So I'm currently seeking investors, and we're going to buy the real estate, and we're going to do it right. You should. And I'm going to have my own four walls, and I can do whatever I want. And you'll pack the house. Oh, every, every it'll be the best comedy club, yeah. I think. Yeah. I know for a fact it'll be really good. I support you in that. Yeah. I'm Where excited. I'm raising a lot Where of money. Where do you want to put it? Well, it's got to be in Hollywood or West Hollywood. We're looking for real estate now. Commercial real estate. Why does it have to be in Hollywood or West Hollywood? We have That's a Canyon crowd. Club right over here. Yeah, but they my, tried. But I, yeah, it changes well. the element. You know, all the comedians live in that area. Okay. Most of them, right. and uh, okay. it's just it's convenient. Okay. And people drive from Orange County to go to Hollywood. They don't drive from Orange County to yeah, go to Burbank. This is true. Or the I've Valley. driven in many you times. You see what I mean? People drive from San Francisco. They want to go to Hollywood. Everyone goes to Hollywood. I gotcha. So I get a mix. And all my friends that I've been promoting, because I'm a Hollywood guy, are in that area. So all the people I know live there. And people drive from the Valley to Hollywood, but nobody from Hollywood goes to the Valley. valley yeah. You see what I mean? I can get all my Valley friends to come to Hollywood. Isn't that funny? No problem. Isn't that weird? But if I try to get Hollywood people to go to the Valley, it just doesn't happen. And, and it's only really talking like, like even the people minutes. in the Valley are like, eh. I live in the valley, but valley really? I'd rather go to Hollywood for a comedy show. You think okay, Universal Club goes too far out? Absolutely. I, I did the John Lovitz Club. There was so hard to promote. Where? John Universal Lovitz had a club City, there. Like, uh, that's the Universal worst City, place yeah. to try to do something. That, that's like, like their own potatoes. little world. I, I didn't like doing shows there. Not for me. Not for my peoples. Well, well let me tell you. Sunset. It was Sunset's where you got to be. Well, Sunset's going to be probably too expensive. So I'm trying to think. We'll see, but Sunset would be wonderful if we could find the. Well, I would imagine going maybe. back after COVID, you'll probably get a very good lease deal somewhere. We're not going to do lease. We're going to buy the property. Oh, buy the you got to own it. Okay. Yeah, because okay. otherwise, it's like you get this great business started, and then look at the House of Blues. Your, rent, your rent's getting yeah, jacked. That's up. true. Plus, the it's a better investment for my investors. You're not just investing in me and my business. You're you get the. Uh, equity on the real estate real estate right well i will support you in it because i believe in you and i i you have you are so talented thank you so thank you thank you for coming today appreciate it i look forward to that i will be there you've always 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 taken care of me and whoever i brought down you make sure that we get in you give us great seats and your show is amazing so thank you so i look much. forward to that call that'll be fun and i thank you for coming on the coriolis effect do you know what the Coriolis effect is? Well, I saw Corey's in there. Olus. Are you Olus? <laughs> okay. No. The Coriolis <laughs> effect. I'll just tell you. Corey's in. Corey and Olus. Well, my last name's Oliver. I know. Oliver, yes. The Coriolis What's effect. What's the yes? Well, the, there's... Corey o oh, Corioli. Corey Oliver. Right? Corey Oliver. She, With an always, S on it. She always drags her S's out. Yeah. There's an actual Coriolis effect, and it's when the right and the left come together okay. and make a circular motion to create a force. Or <laughs> it's when a moving body airflow is diverted north, I'm sorry, diverted north in the northern hemisphere and south in the southern hemisphere. Yeah. It's what causes hurricanes. Oh, wow. So, the two, so if you get the air moving in one direction, air moving in well, the other. Oh, it's a real word. One goes up, one goes world. down, and they create what the, the spins. What but are the it, odds of that? Yeah. I want me to I tell you know quickly. I'll tell you, I was trying to fit, I had just talked to Bob and I was like, well, we'll come up with a name. And I saw my daughter that night and we were talking about the waves and how crazy they've been. And she said, oh, mom, that's the Coriolis effect. And I was like, that's such a good name. That's the wow. name. Because I want the right and the left to be able to come together in unity. Good they luck. May... <laughs> good luck with that. Good <laughs> luck. Talk about a hurricane. 
Not gonna happen. This whole show is uh, giving me. It's an advert. Yeah. Hey, it's like a nightmare. It's like a night terror. It's like a dream. No, but here's the thing. We should not be not gonna happen. <laughs> this is not gonna happen. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. I swear. Good luck. I am on a I don't, mission. I will die of COVID before that happens. <laughs> On the murder mystery show by a serial killer that gives it to me with a shot that I didn't want to take. That's how I'm going to die. Shit's I rebuke off. those yeah. words. I'm joking. I'm joking. I know you are. Jay, I know where your heart is and I know what you believe but in. And you're amazing. Yet. And I be- and I and I, I think that we already have. <laughs> we actually. Just put God first. <laughs> Just put faith. God. It's all it is. Because it's not coming together. It's getting worse. So find your savior. Because we're going to... It's it. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> it's not coming together. I know. I literally uh, swear like to saying, I'm Satan and Jesus, you should be one. It's not going to happen. Okay. It's just not going to happen. Okay. All right. So, I, I, completely, I completely get what you're saying. <laughs> we could try to get along, but it's really deep down there. People are full of S. You know, well, so they're I, not going to be getting along for real. They leave, they talk shit. It's not, there's no... They, they can, be, can you believe that person believes in Jesus? No, I can't. They're crazy! They're crazy! Don't cast them! Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you're the most I don't want to be on their networks. I don't want to be on your network. I don't want to be on it. Uh, I don't care. <clears throat> I'm going to open my own comedy club. I'll create my own art. I'll do movies if people want me to be a part of it. But I think and they'll be fun. I'm... They'll be good. I'm not going to put your propaganda in it. That's it. Thank you. Anyway. Is this over again? <laughs> Can you thank me for coming? And then we'll do five more minutes. Tell me how much you love me. Let's 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 really wrap it up. Can we wrap this up, Oli? We tried. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. No, what I what I I understand what you're saying, and I completely agree. So we'll just yeah. agree that to disagree uh, or to disagree to agree. All right. But well, nonetheless, you know, I love my fr- like you said. I still love my friends. Of course, that's don't my think like me, but. I don't I, hang out with many of them anymore. I'm that's my lie. whole But I have a couple point. that I do. But that's my whole point, with. is over the last 11 months, we've seen a lot of division, and I really would like to just bring yeah. people together and okay. in peace, well, which we've already given you a little bit yeah. of peace from faithbox.com. <laughs> I love be, that. It's going to be tough. Um, but I love you all know, deep down. I know. Yeah. Well, I love you, and I thank you for coming today, Jay. This. Thank yes, you, that is for you. All right. And we're out. <laughs> Jay, so I can't. I love you so much. <laughs>